Though Mercedes-Benz have made it clear that the prestigious Maybach Mark won't play a part in the group's future, the limousines wearing this very special badge still attract as much interest as ever. Buying one is just like joining an exclusive club. There's just the little issue of the huge joining fee, but then that's hardly likely to bother the super rich clientele who believe this, rather than a Rolls Royce or Bentley, to be the most luxurious means of ground travel in the world. Created from a clean sheet of paper and with an automotive heritage quite the equal of its illustrious rivals, the journey in one of these offers a tantalising glimpse into the world of the superlatively wealthy. The Maybach name is a foundational part of automotive history. It was, after all, Wilhelm Maybach with Gottlieb Daimler who created the very first motor car back in 1886, the Daimler Motorkutz, a stagecoach with a 1.5 horsepower grandfather clock engine. From these unpromising beginnings, Wilhelm went on to help develop the Mercedes name into the symbol of elegance and quality that it is today. His son Carl, meanwhile, who'd inherited his father's engineering genius, wanted to go further, forming the Maybach brand in 1909. It specialised in sensationally luxurious automobiles, each one plusher and more powerful than the last, the series culminating in the 7 litre V12 Type 12 of 1929. World War II distracted the company into munitions work for Hitler's Germany, after which for six decades the Maybach Mark lay in mothballs. By the turn of the century though, the famous double M badge had returned and in appropriate pomp. Stung by BMW's purchase of Rolls-Royce and by the Volkswagen Group's takeover of Bentley, the Daimler-Benz board felt that they too should be represented in the ultimate sphere of automotive manufacture, that of luxury limousines. And rather than buying a brand, they decided to resurrect their own, the Maybach name synonymous with Mercedes from the very beginning. This, the Stuttgart maker decided, would be the ultimate expression of automotive luxury. A money, no object, technological statement uncompromised by quaint British heritage. It was a bold move. A decade on, Maybach has settled into its own low profile niche at the top table of automotive manufacture. Its cars aimed at those needing a lower profile conveyance that quietly yet confidently wafts them from boardroom to penthouse suite in luxury that no other brand can match. It's an appeal that can be hard to understand on paper where a Rolls Royce or a Bentley might seem to be a bigger draw. Which is perhaps why, in the decade following its relaunch, the brand was able to persuade so few top executives to try one of these cars, and why Mercedes announced in late 2011 that the brand would be dropped. That's a pity, for in the metal, the experience that one of these can offer is uniquely different, as we're about to find out. There's only one place you can properly enjoy the driving experience that this car has to offer, and it isn't behind the wheel. Thank you. Now inside you immerse yourself in a world of superlatives, the cabin blending comfort, aesthetic qualities and state-of-the-art technology to create what Maybach hopes is an incomparable travelling experience. Now this is probably the only part of the car that owners of the long wheelbase 62 model will ever sit. Now they can monitor what's going on up front easily enough via these dials set into the ceiling showing outside temperature, time and speed. But I'm told that occasionally, just occasionally, perhaps at weekends, buyers of the short wheelbase 57 model apparently like to take the wheel themselves, as I'm going to now. Rob, would you mind pulling over? Thank you. So for them, I'm going to offer a quick synopsis of the driving experience, which you won't be surprised to hear is pretty much the same as that of a top Mercedes S-Class. Of course it is. 
This car, after all, shares the same engines, much the same airmatic DC air suspension, and many of the same underpinnings as that model. In standard form, both models are powered by a Pokia 543 brake horsepower bi-turbo Type 12 version of the 5.5 litre V12 you'll find in a Mercedes S600. It's 900 newton metres of torque accessed through just five ratios in the silky smooth automatic gearbox. Resta 60 takes a fraction over five seconds in both models, but should for some reason that be insufficient, perhaps because in the 57 you want tyre blistering performance to help you in a hijack situation, or because in the 62 you want the car's performance to be unaffected by the addition of, say, armour plating, then Maybach offer the option of an S, or special model, with an uprated engine, and that's the one that I've chosen here. Tick the box for it and the engineers will shoehorn in the 630 brake horsepower uh, bi-turbo 6 litre V12 used in the Mercedes S65 AMG, hand built by specialists in a falter back and able to produce in this limousine the world's most powerful series produced chauffeured saloon. It doesn't uh, do much to the 0 to 60 time, it only shaves a few tenths off, but it adds considerably to the torque on offer, creating a nice round 1,000 newton meters. Now, so equipped, your chauffeur will be able to toast your tires in a hijack situation, uh, getting from 0 to 60 quicker than would be possible in a featherlight Caterham sports car. Whichever of the two V12s you use at idle, you'll find it absolutely silent. And even at speed like this, there's only a distant thrum, so as not to impede the 600 watt sound system. In fact, the only real mechanical noise is the occasional distant thud of surface irregularities, as the air sprung suspension does its best to try and cushion the ride. In the unlikely event of you needing to throw this car around country corners, then there are two Torta settings on the air suspension from which to choose, and set either one of them, and this limousine handles surprisingly well for something of its size. To reduce drag and improve stability, the body drops by 15 millimeters at speeds of over 83 miles an hour, uh, while if your speed drops uh, below 43 miles an hour, it, the body then returns to its normal level again. This car, like its brand, is low profile in every way. Own one of these, and others will probably assume that you bought a Mercedes S-Class or a Lexus LS. Not for you, the showy Sir Alan Sugar opulence of a Rolls-Royce Phantom or a Bentley Mulsanne. And that's just the point. You don't enter the first class cabin of a 747 and worry about what the outside of the plane looks like. Interior luxury is everything. So I'm not gonna spend long debating the aesthetic merits of the bodywork with you with its long front end and short rear haunches. Though if you're a likely buyer, I will plead with you to avoid one of the ghastly two-tone paint finishes. What I will say though, is that this car is a stylistically balanced in this long wheelbase Maybach 62 6.17 meter form, as it is in standard uh, short wheelbase 5.73 meter Maybach 57 guys. And that's an achievement in itself. Most stretch saloons after all look like something from a convex mirror. The looks of this one have changed little since its introduction in 2002, bar a minor facelift in 2010, which saw a darkening of the red rear lights and the addition of a chrome strip on a boot lid, which rises to reveal 605 litres of total space. But as I said, cabin opulence is what this car is all about. As the door opens widely to 85 degrees, you glimpse a whole different world inside. Previous to my Maybach experience, I'd thought a Rolls-Royce or a Bentley to be the summit of executive transportation. I was wrong. Press the button to close the door in one of these. Curiously, it doesn't also open it and you're immersed in a world of uh, aromatic Nappa leather, deep pile lambswool carpets, and creamy soft mood lighting. 
Around you lie almost a hundred exquisitely crafted and hand-fitted items of exotic wood trim. And of course, there's plenty of high tech, including a convenient user management interface for the multimedia system, uh, or a remote if you prefer. There's a cordless telephone. There's space for your champagne flutes or whiskey tumblers. There's electric curtains for the side windows and the rear one. And there's uh, even uh, an intercom so you can communicate with the driver. Where is that? Uh, then that's essential if you've got the electroluminescent partition fitted as I have here. But most of this you probably expect at this level. What for me though makes this car different is the sheer luxury of these reclining, heated and cooled seats and the extra space that this car offers over all its competitors. So instead of perching on the seat, you sink down into it, reclining into a semi-recumbent position for maximum comfort. As well as the twin video monitors you'd expect, there's also room here for a proper huge 19-inch surround sound cinema screen, which, if I'd specified it here, would fold down out of the roof. The result of all this makes all the difference. Only in a Maybach can you forget that you're travelling in a car at all, lost in luxury separating you from less fortunate mortals in the world beyond its laminated windows. Buyers of the long wheelbase 62 model, this one, can feel especially exclusive if they've specified the optional electroluminescent panoramic glass roof with a sliding liner and a membrane that's able to uh, become clear or opaque depending on your requirements and at night diffuse uh, a gentle light around the rear of the cabin. The same electroluminescent technology is used in the partition that can separate driver from passenger and uh, presumably emblazoned with your corporate logo, it can rise up automatically if negotiation of a billion dollar deal is perhaps in progress. Perhaps the only slightly annoying thing is the retracted position of these rear curtains. Now they'll be great for uh, third world dictators or movie stars when pulled into position, but uh, pulled back like this, they almost completely obscure your side view, forcing you to crane your neck forwards almost two feet to look out of the windows. But then why would you want to look out of the windows anyway? If you're a typical buyer, you'll spend your whole journey engrossed on a conference call to Beijing or buried in the FT. To say that this chauffeur in front of you will be equally comfortable is an exaggeration, but your driver won't lack for much. Mindful perhaps that many owners will very rarely seat themselves behind the helm, Maybach hasn't tried as hard here as Bentley and Rolls-Royce to create a uniquely uber-class feel. Many of the controls are taken directly from a Mercedes S-Class, but so carefully crafted is that car that it all still seems in keeping with the exclusive atmosphere that billionaires will want. Now, when you've reached the point where you want your business to reward you with a car of this kind, then price, although a factor, won't be the overriding consideration. I suppose when you're used to signing off $30 million on a Learjet, then buying a car at this level won't be very much of a big deal. Um, Maybach reckons it's never been approached by a customer who's even queried the cost, which from this German brand's point of view is probably just as well, for its products are amongst the most expensive in this rarefied market sector. Quite an exclusive used car market is building up around Maybach 57 and 62 models, but obviously values on these vary wildly. So that you can see how the car was designed to compete with its super luxury sector rivals, let's have a look at how it was originally priced brand new, with figures based on the asking amounts back at the end of 2011. For an entry level Maybach 57, the Stuttgart brand then demanded your company accountant to be signing off at least £280,000, Rolls-Royce phantom money. 
This alternative didn't look as grand as a roller, but remains much more potent under the bonnet, with an extra 100 brake horsepower on tap. And for a new model premium of around £40,000, there was always the option to go even faster by exchanging its 5.5 litre V12 for the 6 litre unit fitted to the 57S model. But if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the back of this car, how much better to go even further and opt for this longer wheelbase Maybach 62, priced new back in late 2011 at £320,000, with a further £50,000 premium for those wanting the S-Spec and the larger 6-litre engine. Now, whichever model you choose, uh, there aren't that many alternatives. If you're looking at the entry-level Maybach 57, then uh, you'll be comparing against not only the Rolls-Royce Phantom with 453 brake horsepower, but also the Rolls-Royce Ghost, which for £200,000 offers you 563 brake horsepower. Also, Bentley's 505 brake horsepower, £220,000 Malsan may well make your wish list. If you're looking for this extended wheelbase 62 model, then the only real alternative is Rolls-Royce's Phantom in extended wheelbase form, but uh, that car is significantly more expensive, up around £340,000. The basic Maybach proposition is pretty straightforward then. The short wheelbase 57 for those who might occasionally like to drive themselves, or this longer wheelbase 62 for those who almost inevitably never will. In both cases, you have the option of exchanging the 5.5 litre V12 for the 6 litre unit that's fitted to this S model. And if you are going for the 62S, then if money's no object, you might want to consider the Landolet variant with its open topped uh, convertible rear. Or if you're an Arab sheik or a head of government, then the guard version might appeal with its armour plated bodywork. Whatever the spec of any individual Maybach model, there will of course be a few specifications givens. And here these run to everything from a DVD player as part of a 600 watt surround sound audio system to a TV receiver. From a refrigerated compartment to a cordless telephone with two handsets. There's also uh, two uh, climate control setups to uh, look after temperatures both front and rear. And as you'd expect, the state-of-the-art safety with no fewer than 10 airbags and the latest electronic assistance systems for braking, traction and stability control. But of course that's just the start. Maybach reckons that there are no fewer than 2.2 million different trim and equipment permutations. Everything from bespoke luggage to an advanced system for perfuming the interior. From cigar humidors and sterling silver champagne flutes to a golf bag and virtually any kind of interior trim. A popular option fitted to many Maybach models is this partition screen to separate passenger from driver and this lovely panoramic roof with its electroluminescent lighting. Those models with armour plating can repel up to a 0.44 magnum round with protection specifically designed for kidnap, hijack and street crime situations. This car also has a solar panel fitted with up to 30 solar cells which are able to convert sunlight into electrical energy and then power the climate control system when the engine is switched off. So time to settle back and look through a few financials. What will this Maybach cost to keep on the road? And does it matter? After all, it seems to be fairly irrelevant to be talking about fuel and CO2 figures in a car this pricey. But even chief executives have to live in the real world and telling their managers to switch off their screensavers at night when the chairman's limo struggles to break the two-figure mark for fuel consumption, well, that might not go down too well. Uh, that's why there's no embarrassment of that kind here. The standard 5.5 litre V12 short wheelbase 57 model manages 15.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, though that does fall to just 12 miles to the gallon around town, and it puts out 350 grams per kilometre of CO2. There's no penalty for opting for the long wheelbase 62 variant that I'm in here. 
and if you go for the uprated S engine, that's a six litre bi-turbo V12 with its extra 80 brake horsepower, rather curiously, the fuel consumption actually improves to 17.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, though the CO2 figure drops to 368 grams per kilometre. But whichever version you choose, you're probably going to need the capacity of the huge 110 litre fuel tank. It turns out that choosing the world's ultimate luxury conveyance isn't as simple as perhaps you'd first thought. If for you a car of this kind must be the ultimate status symbol, then this isn't it. But is it the ultimate way to travel? Very definitely yes. An executive jet is all about transcontinental speed and luxury. So is a Maybach. Like the company's 20s and 30s era models, this car is more powerful and more luxurious than any of its rivals. And the fact that hardly anyone you pass will give it more than a second glance will be for many one of its biggest draws. There's space to think in one of these, space to relax, to work, to live. If you can afford one, you probably earned it.